what are the things we are going to do to improvise our mobile coverage and capacity in that we have seen four important things what is cell splitting sectoring repeaters we have which we are going to use for extending the range and then about zone microcells now in this class we will be seeing all these things in detail okay what is cell splitting please make notes cell splitting is the process of subdividing a congested cell into smaller cells each with its own day station and a corresponding reduction in antenna height and transmitted power so what is cell splitting cell splitting we are splitting the big cells into smaller cells so that you get more coverage okay there is a bigger base station this base station is further divided into smaller cells as shown in the figure you can see that there is a cell here that is being further split say you can see the small cells a d c and so on okay so cell splitting increases the capacity of a cellular system since it increases the number of times that a channel is reused okay by decreasing the radius r and keeping the co channel reuse ratio d by r unchanged cell splitting increases the number of channels per unit area on splitting the power on splitting the power has to be reduced by a factor of power transmitted in a small cell divided by the power transmitted in the parent or in the large cell which will be equal to the the received power with the to the raise raised to path loss exponent p transmitted in a small cell divided by p transmitted in a large cell the ratio of pass will be equal to the power received at the small cell by the power received at the larger cell whole raised to the path loss exponent so here here you can see that this is a larger cell that is split into smaller cells what are the disadvantages of cell splitting in practice not all cells are split at the same time it is often difficult for a service provider to find the real estate that is perfectly situated for cell splitting because there will be certain areas it in city areas or certain areas where the congestion is much much higher so in reality it is very difficult for a service provider to arrange or to make settings for making my different cells splitting a larger cell into multiple cell another disadvantage the main disadvantage of cell splitting is that it requires the construction of new towers and this involves additional expenditure to the service provider okay what is sectoring 
in sectoring the channels are allocated to a particular cell are divided among the different cells and capacity improvement is achieved by reducing the number of cells in a cluster and thus increasing the frequency reuse sectoring is different from splitting in sectoring what we are doing is that a particular cell is divided into different sectors you are not splitting the cells but one cell has different sectors and each sector will be allocated different frequency so that frequency reuse is made possible in sectoring a cell has the same coverage space but instead of using a single omnidirectional antenna that transmits in all directions either three or six directional antennas are used and each with beam width of about 120 degree to 60 degree when sectoring is employed the channels allocated to a particular cell are divided among the different sectors it is done in such a way that channels assigned to a particular sector are always at the same direction in the different cells for example group a of channels assigned to the sector s2 group b of channels are assigned to sector s1 and so on at the top of all cells and so on each sector causes interference to the cells that are in its transmission angle only so here is a diagrammatical representation of sectoring sectoring is different from cell splitting you are not splitting the cells into different cells same cell you are considering it to be different sectors for frequency reuse and more efficient transmission is that clear so here is a diagrammatic representation you can draw this diagram in your exams so that you get more marks you have for example you take this this one s1 s2 and s3 we have three sectors this is one cell that is divided into three sectors have you all written it down taken down so here is a picture of a group of antennas we are sectoring it into different sectors you might have noticed these things when you are watching a mobile tower you can see that there are different sectors okay i believe that all of you are clear with how sectoring is done to improve coverage and capacity so what are the disadvantages of sectorization mobiles have to change channels more often resulting in an increase the signaling load on the system there will be more number of handoffs am i right when a person or when a moving equipment travels from one sector to the other sector there will be a change in the frequency channel or the frequency in which he is communicating to the station the available pool of channels has to be reduced by a factor of how many times how many sectors are being divided here in this example it is 3 okay for a particular location so what happens this naturally reduces the trunking efficiency given in the same cell the third method for improvising coverage and capacity 
extension of range by use of repeaters a much more simpler and effective way to improvise your coverage the use of repeater in cellular mobile communication system is for extending the range of reception of the receiver you can see this diagrammatically explained in this example so now in certain areas like hilly areas and valleys and all repeaters are highly used the fourth method of improvising coverage and cell capacity is by the use of microcells by the use of sectorization we can increase the system performance but side by side there will be large increment of handoffs which result in the increment of the load on switching and control link elements of the mobile system so there must be some technique for solution of this problem so a microcell concept is introduced which leads to an increased capacity without any degradation in trunking efficiency caused by sectoring so we are using microcells in order to improvise sectoring and cell splitting sectoring we have big disadvantage that every sector when the user transits he or she has to there should be a hand off procedure from one sector to the other cell splitting as explained has huge infrastructural requirements at every point we need to increase the number of micro the smaller cells whichever we are creating within that so what we are going to do we are going to make a micro cell soul so you can see that how micro cell is being implemented so you have a bigger cell you have micro cells each cell each of the three possible zones are connected to a single base station and share the same radio equipment the zones are connected by coaxial cables optical fibers or microwave links usually it is microwave links to the base station multiple zones and single base station make up a cell this approach is superior to sectoring since antennas are placed at outer edges of the cell and any base station channel can be assigned to any zone by the base station now there might be a question why is micro cell superior to sectoring or what are the advantages of creating micro cells when compared to sectoring you will be able to answer this question if you can write these points in your answer what are the advantages of microcell concept this is very important this might be a question in your university exams please write down the advantages of microcell concept a given channel is active only in a particular zone thus interference is reduced and therefore 
capacity is naturally increased right handoffs are reduced we don't have especially this handoffs are reduced when we compare with the sectoring handoffs are reduced since the microcells within the cell operate at the same frequency no handover occurs when the mobile unit moves between the microcells size of the sort apparatus is small the sort site equipment being small can be mounted on the side of a building or on the poles so with this we have come to the end of the first module these are some important questions that might appear for your university exams now i want all of you to submit this as your assignment